The periodic table was the first time, uh, Mendeleev's table now, where not only was he looking at ordering things, but he used it to make predictions, okay? Uh, that's important because it meant that it was more than just a, a set of orders, if you will. And so it became the basis for finally organizing what was otherwise a, a terrible jungle, if you will, of what was going on. Um, the other thing was that Mendeleev was not nailed, he was not fixed on just the atomic weights. So that when it came to tellurium and iodine, for example, iodine has a lower atomic weight than tellurium. But the chemistry of iodine made it very clear it belonged below bromine. And so Mendeleev was not a slave to the uh, atomic weights. <coughs> and of course, yeah, we take a look now and we've just finished the, the seventh period um, of the periodic table um, with, oddly enough, a Russian chemist, or sorry, a Russian physicist as the uh, person for whom the last element has been named. That's uh, Professor Oganesian, or Akademician, I guess, Oganesian. My favorite element? Well, my favorite city in Russia is actually Kazan, and consequently it would have to be the element that was discovered at Kazan, which is Rutini. Rutini. Yeah? Ruthenium. Absolutely. I'm an organic chemist also, a synthetic organic chemist, and ruthenium is a critical element in things like all of the metathesis, which has become a very important uh, um, element, or a very important reaction for building medium-sized rings and the like. So, yeah, and it just looks pretty. And I have seen Klaus's original sample at Kazan. So. Original, very, very clever answer. Uh, uh, and, uh, That's not clever. <laughs> last question. Uh, last question. Yeah. Uh, uh, please say, uh, little child with little children, uh, why is uh, science clever? Uh, is clever? Uh, why? Why science is nice? Uh, oh, um, little children like to ask questions, and. In a lot of ways, scientists are little children who never grew up because we still like to ask questions. We still, we still want answers, but we're now old enough, we know we won't get the answers without working for them. But in her, inside, inside, scientists are still little children. We still have the wonder of the world. We can see the world around us and it's, it's a, uh, yeah, childlike wonder, I think, is the way to describe it. But it's, it's important, yeah. And so, for little children, I think, you know, if you do not want to grow up, become a scientist. If you, if you don't want to grow up, be a scientist, because you'll get to ask all the questions you want, and nobody will tell you don't ask another question. <laughs>